All right, so today we're going to look at scale readings and meters. This is one of those skills you guys are going to have to read meters all your life. So figuring out scales is a pretty important skill. So here, this is just a standard scale, a pretty simple scale. To do a scale, one of the first things you have to do is you got to figure out what each space on the scale stands for. So I pick two labeled markings. I, I usually exclude zero because sometimes zero is not necessarily at the end of the scale. Sometimes the end of the scale is truncated or cut off a little bit. So I usually take that first one, the first labeled one after zero, and then the one after that. So I go from 10 to 20 here. So I'm going to do this. It's 20 minus 10, the big one minus the small one, over, I count how many spaces are between them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten spaces between them. Now here, since there's a definite mark halfway, I could have just counted half of them and doubled it instead of counting all of them. So I've got 20 minus 10 is 10. Divided by 10 is 1. That means each space on here, each marking on here is one unit, whatever unit this is. This is not labeled as to what unit it is, but it is one unit. So where's this needle pointing here? 37. This is 35, 6, 7. So on this one, we run into these scales like this that have multiple settings. This one, we have the low, the small numbers, the medium, and then the high, the big numbers. How do we know which scale to use? The dial down here is set on... 16, that's the middle setting. So that means we're using this middle set of numbers here. Does that make sense so far? So now, and you can see here, this doesn't start necessarily at zero. So now we need to figure out what each means. So I'm going to go from 11 here to 12 here. 12 minus 11 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's halfway, so there's going to double that as 10 spaces. So 12 minus 11 is 1. This is volts. That's 1 volt divided by 10. So it's 0.1 volt. Each division, each marking is 0.1 volt here. So here's the needle. This is 12, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.5, 0.6. 12.6 volts. Questions? No? This one... First of all, is a reverse scale. You can see this one starts on the right, leads back to the left. The needle actually zeroes out here as well. This is also what's called a logarithmic scale. You notice the spacing is not the same. This much space on the meter has a very different value than this much, the same amount of space over on this part of the meter. Here, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, here it's 30, 40, 50, 60. On this type of meter, really about the only way to tell is to count it out. Um, this one's labeled 7. Probably didn't have to be. I guess it did have to be because there is no marking for 6. But. So we see the needle there. This is 5, 7. Just count and see if it works. 8, 9, 10. That seems to work. So that's the 8 is where that's at. Oh, it's on the times 1,000. Exactly. So that's 8,000. And that is ohms. That's an ohm meter. Now for you guys measuring ohms, you're going to be using a, a digital multimeter anyway, a digital voltmeter. So you shouldn't have to read a scale like this, but I want you to be aware that they're out there. You can read them. Do you have a meter like that, an analog? There are a, a lot of mechanics still like them, especially if you have like several readouts at once. If you've got a meter that's reading voltage, resistance, and a lot of things at once. Well, you can look at those meters, and a lot of them have like a critical range. So you just look up and see is the needle in the red, or is it in the yellow, is it in the green, and you know you're good to go. You don't necessarily have to get the number. Okay. So here's one we got two different readings on it. What's each space stand for here? One. So this needle is 27. Careful with it, yeah. This one is 49. Now, another thing that sometimes happens with these, um, some meters have what's called an idler needle. Have you ever seen one of those? 
there's actually a little knob coming out of the center that you can actually turn with your fingers. Then the second needle that's up above the other so it doesn't move with the others, and you can actually just turn it and stop it. Like the needle is where this first dotted line is here. I turn it so that idler needle is sitting over the top of it, and it's going to stay there. So then I go take another reading, and it now jumps to this. So I say, well, the difference is the difference between the two needles. So it actually find how much, how far the needle has moved, or how much has changed. So the idler needle is to mark what it was before. Okay, so for this one, what's it reading? Well, it's between 1 and 2, and yeah, it looks about halfway. So it's probably 1.5, 1.4, whatever. And it's times 1, so it's just 1.4. Well, we're 1.5. Okay. Here, the darker one is where it is now. The lighter one is where it was. So what's the change here? Well, this one was what? This one is 55, so the change is 14. It went up 14, so it's a plus 14. Here, this is actually a, an older version of an emissions test. Now, again, they do have digital versions of this. I don't know, do you guys use, do you have the emissions tool in the shop? No, okay. The carbon monoxide meter or anything like that? I think it's Oh, they have it up there. We won't talk about that. So anyway. Sorry, we're going to get the engine thing and or the, the thing that you can put an engine on and run it. And the dyno? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Cool. So anyway, here... We're measuring hydrocarbons. How do we know which one of those meters to read? Or which one of those scales? So low, which means we're going to use the smaller one. Now this one we can actually see that the needle is right between 200 and 300. It's a 250. How about here? That looks like a 20, doesn't it? But look next to it. That's 1.5 and 2.5. It's actually 2.0. The needle's just covering up the decimal point. Here's an amp and a voltmeter. How many amps is that reading? 200. That is reading 200. How many volts? It's at the 20, so it's going to be using the top scale. So that's, yeah, 8, 9, 10. That's got to be 9. 10, of course, would be using the bottom scale. What if I set it 30? Add the two numbers together. That they, I haven't seen that on a meter now for a long time, but they used to have that on meters. Add the numbers together to get a third setting. So they didn't have to put a third scale on the meter. Well, this one here looks to be the exact same one, doesn't it? Well, then we're not going to have to read that one. How about this one? What's this meter reading? 250. How about this meter? 8. Why uh, isn't it the same spot? Why isn't it still 2.0? It's on the high one. Settings matter. How about this one? Well, the 2000 is which mark on that? That one? Okay. And I would say it is. So what it is, there isn't actually a mark where the needle is, there isn't actually a mark. So this is 16, 18, and 2000. So it's probably just a touch below 1700. 1700 is probably about as close as we can estimate, though. This one is on. 2.0 again. Top one here. This is an individual needle. What's that reading? 31. Bottom one. 14. How about this one? 
from the eight settings so we're reading this top right so from here to here goes from six to seven so seven minus six that's one volt we have one two three four five ten fifteen twenty divisions right that's 0 0.05 volts per division so that's seven that's actually 7.05 where it's at how about here we're now set on the higher scale highest scale so from here to here is 24 minus 22 right and that's 10 divisions so 2 volts divided by 10 that's 0.2 volts so this is 22.2.4.6 any questions on that you're shaking your head over there you have it it's just a matter you've got to slow yourself down and make sure you know before you just start reading it you got to make sure you know what those divisions stand for this one. It is 13.4 volts. On the middle setting, each one is 0.1. And this one? 13.8. Very good. Now we're going to look at some meters, some gauges, that... A little more complex. This is a surface gauge. Um, you'd use this like to go along the head of a block to make sure the block the head is flat. Stuff like that or testing the head the head as well to see if the, the head itself is flat. It can either go, you can see it's positive or negative here. The arrow here is not actually on the meter, it's just indicating that from zero the needle went that direction. So it's saying this one read positive, but the needle can go either direction from zero on these. It can either go in or out. Well, we first have to look down here. This little needle tells us if it's gone completely around at all. It's between zero and one, so it's saying no, it has not completely gone around. Oh, that counts the revolution. The whole revolution, yes. 17.17 millimeters. So 1.17. Like here, this one, it's between the 2 and the 3. So that's 2 point. But you got to be careful, the arrow is pointing this way. So it's a negative 2 point, right? The needle went in the negative direction. Also, the arrow is pointing this way. You'll notice the scale goes 10, 20, 30, 40, but it also goes 10, 20, 30, 40 that way. You got to count back. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 1. This one, first thing we should really look for is positive or negative. Negative whole millimeters zero two nine how about this one positive or negative positive it's between one and two so it's one 50 60 70 four Seventy one, two, three, four. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right. Not bad? Well then. How about this one? Notice this is 0 .001. It's not millimeters. It is inches. This is not 1 anymore. It's 0 .1, but it's still a whole revolution. So first thing we always read is still positive. 0.1. And 10, right? 110. It's not inches instead of millimeters. 
So this one, positive or negative? Negative whole revolutions? It hasn't made it to the point 0.9 is the question. Now we're going negative. It is not quite back to zero again. So it's going to be negative 0.8 yet. 40, 50, 60, 78. So 0.878 negative inches. This one? That was a bad yawn. Positive or negative? Positive. Whole turns? 24. It is 37. Does the, does the smaller zoom to the small circle, does that turn at the same direction regardless of the positive? Yes, it always goes counterclockwise, no matter whether this goes positive or negative. That's actually a very good question, but yeah, it does. These, the mechanics inside of these is actually pretty complex to make it do that. How about this one? This is a negative, 0.1, 59. It's 40, we're going this way. So 40, 50, 59. Hey, look at this one. 1 1.5, 2.0, 2.5. So I've got 2.5 minus 2.0, which gives me 0 0.5. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 marks, right? So that's 0 0.1 per mark. 2.2. .2. How about this one? 50 to 100, so 100 minus 50. Divided by 10 spaces is 5 per space. So this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Or I could have counted backwards from 50. 50, 45, 40. I would have most likely done the backwards from 50 myself. 8 minus 6 is 2, and there's 10 spaces. So 0 0.2, so 6.2, 6 6.4. This one's that ohm meter type thing again. This one's a little more clear than the other one, I think. This is 10 and 15. I'm just going to count them out. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It works. So that's it. The 12 ohms. This one is at. There's 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. It's 120. Yeah, it was a little hard to see from that distance, I suppose. How about this one? That's at the thousand. At the one K or one thousand dollars. And this one. Sorry. If I leave this with this five, that would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So that's actually five point five. This one? One fifty minus one hundred is fifty. Ten spacings. That's five. So one, one hundred five, one ten, one fifteen, one twenty. And this one. Negative, very good. Point zero. Because it's this and this is zero to one. And yes, fifty six. This one, negative two because it's millimeters now again instead of inches. 58. I will tell you, there is a problem like this on a quiz coming up probably Wednesday next week. That, that meter is the most misread one on the quiz. Because people either forget about the positive or negative, 
or they forget to look to see if it's a millimeter or inch. So is it a whole number or a point? Those are tough meters to read. I'm not going to deny that at all. Yeah, it's a service meter. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what those are. Yeah, this is this is a definitely a highly used inspection meter. So in your book, page 209, exercise 4.9, 1 through 42 the ads. Yes, we're going back to your book again, friend. No more packets and stuff to do. For now. 